Have you ever been walking down the street and thinking, I wonder how many people it takes to build all these cool construction projects? What an outstanding question, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about all the different contractors that are used on most jobs. We'll be talking about what each contractor does and some typical things that you'll go through when they're building the project. So for all of you aspiring construction engineers out there, this would be a pretty good crash course for all the things that you might encounter when you work on a construction project. So I'll go through each contractor in sequential order, starting from when they would typically arrive on site. Starting from all the way at the bottom in the dirt, all the way to the final finishes. So if you're ready to go, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So one of the first contractors that you'll deal with on site is what would be called the civil contractor. And these are the contractors that you see with all the big, cool, heavy equipment out there. And the main job of these civil contractors is to prep the construction site. So one way you'll do that is through grading the site. And by grading, I don't mean like letter grade, like going to a job site and saying, this is a B minus site. Grading is a term that is used to determine what the terrain of the site will look like. And this will be shown in your civil drawings of the job site. And it's so important that you have a good civil contractor because if you don't grade the site properly at the beginning, you can create some big problems later on. And this contractor will also likely be in charge of a lot of the underground utilities. So whether it be your storm drain, your sanitary lines, this contractor will be in charge of all the excavation and laying of all these underground utilities. And it's very important that there's a lot of thought put into this process because once you start building the building on top of your foundation, it's gonna be a lot harder if you miss a utility underneath. So then after your civil contractor, you're likely need to hire somebody to do the foundations. If you're doing just a low rise building, you might just be dealing with spread footings in which your civil contractor will just be excavating for your foundations. But if you're doing some of these big towers, you'll likely need a deeper foundation where you may be required to do something like driven or auger cast piles. And this is a specialty contractor like here in Hawaii, we sometimes have to go out of state in order to find the contractors that actually do this work. And so then you'll need a concrete contractor. And a lot of times, especially here in Hawaii, this concrete contractor is part of the general contractor. They will be in charge of the forming aspects of the concrete, whether it be all the suspended slabs, the footings, all the vertical elements like the core walls, columns, things like that. And they'll also be in charge of the placing of the concrete and the finishing of the concrete. So keep in mind that's a lot of different trades. You'll have carpenters, masons, and laborers as a part of the concrete contractor. There are times on site where there are contractors that only do the form work and the placing and the finishing of the concrete is a separate contractor. But there is so much interface in between these two contractors that sometimes it always makes sense to keep it with one team. The concrete contractor really drives the project and drives the schedule, so it's really important that all your parties in charge of this are working at their most efficient level. But you can't pour concrete without rebar, so you'll need a rebar contractor. And so your rebar contractor will be in charge of installing all the rebar for the job. Sometimes on these jobs, you'll have post tension cables that need to be installed. And this will be done by your rebar contractor. One tip for all you aspiring engineers out there, a lot of times your rebar contractor will miss some of the typical details that they'll need in the structural drawings. A lot of times these typical details apply to like slab blockouts or openings in the slab. A lot of times these rebar contractors say they don't know where all these openings in the slabs are going to be and that they can't plan for all of these little trim packages all around. You need to make sure you squash that at the beginning of the job. The typical notes in your structural drawings will have a lot of very good information in there and I tend to see that the rebar contractors miss that from time to time. But there's not only concrete buildings out there, a lot of times buildings are made vertically out of structural steel. So you'll need to have a structural steel contractor on site. And likely even if the building is made out of concrete, there's going to be structural steel elements like stairways, you'll likely need structural steel in your elevator openings, and maybe you'll have some sort of amenity deck building which will have steel up above. And structural steel may consist of columns, structural steel decking which will pour concrete on top, structural beams, and this is where you may see some interface between different contractors because a lot of times the connections to concrete are placed by the concrete contractor. So when there's anchor bolts, when there's structural steel embeds, those are placed in and installed into the concrete elements by the concrete contractor, and then the structural steel contractor will attach to these elements. So you need to make sure that both of these contractors are coordinated so that you don't have any screw-ups. And there are a lot of screw-ups out there. 
Steel is actually very unforgiving to install, so you need to make sure if you're watching over the concrete contractor that all of these elements, the anchor bolts and the embeds, are placed in the right spot to avoid further field modifications that will affect schedule and cost money. And then you'll have your masonry contractor. And when I think about masonry, I'm thinking about the block setters. So one thing to remember, a lot of times, or at least here in Hawaii, these masonry contractors don't provide the rebar that actually reinforces the walls. That comes from the rebar contractor. So make sure that's properly coordinated by your team. In each masonry block, there's two cells that are inside of it, and you need to make sure that you're spacing your rebar appropriately so that it lands inside one of these cells. And a lot of time, your concrete contractor is the one that's supposed to be setting the template to make sure that all these bars are in the right spot. So again, a lot of interface between all the different trades. So those are your basic structural contractors. But for the most part, buildings are more than just concrete and steel. So the building will need to be functional and you'll need some mechanical, electrical, and plumbing aspects to your building. And a lot of times this is referenced as MEP. So mechanical is like all your duct work for your AC and things like that. Electrical is your electrical. We need to turn on some lights in here. And plumbing is where all the poop goes. And the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing contractors will need to be there from the entirety of the job for the most part because you'll have underground utilities that need to be installed. And you'll likely need to have some of these things installed inside of the concrete slabs. And then you'll have your like electrical fixtures, plumbing fixtures, or maybe some sort of access panel for your duct work. So these contractors see the entire life cycle of the job. There's a lot of different things involved with MEP. And it's hard to make a new building look pretty sexy without some glass. So you'll need a glass contractor. So having a good glass contractor is very important. You have to make sure that the glass contractor is coordinating their system with what the intended deflections and movement of the structural details are. And a lot of times your glass contractor will actually determine your slab edges of the building. And your glass contractor is so important because typically they're the ones that drive how you can dry in the building or essentially make it watertight. So this is a very important contractor for the site. So once all these contractors are getting going, it's time to put in some finishes. So you'll first start out with an interior framer and drywaller and some tapers. So interior framing, you'll see all those like metal studs in there. Usually if you're doing more residential, sometimes this will be wood studs, but typically in commercial projects, it's metal. And then you'll have the drywallers, the ones that actually put the drywall on the framing. They'll also install the insulation that goes in the walls. And then you'll have your taper, the one that makes all the joints in the walls look nice and flattened out. Or the ones that set the corners of the walls. And this is likely going to be one contractor. And the higher level of finish that you have on your project, the higher scrutiny you're going to be putting on this contractor. And then you'll need to have a contractor that will take care of something like flooring, tiling, and probably some countertops. Again, you probably want to keep this with one contractor, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And then you have your finished carpenters, and these people will do maybe your cabinet install, hanging your doors, your frames, and installing all the hardware for it. And so once you've got all those trains in line, it's time to start painting. But sometimes painters can do stuff like wall coverings, or they might be able to do some waterproofing on the outside. A lot of times painters will do caulking as well. And then if you're in a taller building, you'll likely have an elevator contractor. And especially on the big towers, having your elevator contractor on board very early and getting installed becomes very important so that you can take down the outside hoist on the building and you can complete all of the units. The more the elevator install lags, the later you have to take down your hoist and the later you'll finish the project. So it's so important that the concrete contractor tops off at the appropriate time so that you can get all of your elevators going and you can start using that for access into the building. And then of course, to top it all off, you'll have your roofer or your waterproofer. It's very important that you go in great detail into all of these waterproofing details on the job because you don't want your building to leak. And a lot of times these installs are very weather sensitive, so if there's any little bit of rain, they likely can't install their stuff. And to put your final touches on your building, you'll have your landscaper. Nothing brightens up the place like a bunch of trees and plants just to make everything look a lot more green and lively. And one tip with landscaping work, because they come on the job so late, you want to make sure that you're actually thinking of them at the beginning of the job when you're pouring the structure. A lot of times preparations for irrigation lines are missed in the structural part, so just make sure you don't forget about the landscapers when you're building the job. And so I don't know if you're counting, but those are 18 different contractors that can be used on the job. And I've actually skipped over quite a few. 
Like you'll have some miscellaneous contractors out there for like maybe the crane erection, the hoist erection. You'll probably have a railing contractor, maybe some specialty suppliers for shelving. Maybe you'll have a fencing contractor, a termite treatment contractor. Maybe you'll have a surveyor or like those big overhead coiling door contractors. Maybe some window shades, maybe a specific caulking contractor. And you might need some sort of cleaner for these finished units. So overall, especially on these big tower projects, you can easily have a few hundred people that are working on this project. That's a lot of people that you need to manage and coordinate with when you're working on a construction project. So I hope this gives you a good idea of how much teamwork is needed to build a construction project. A lot of moving parts, a lot of different personalities. It's our job to bring everything together and make it happen. So I'll likely make another video going more in depth on each contractor is probably a multi-part series. If that's something you're actually interested in as well, be sure to comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe with the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And don't forget to use my link below and get your two free stocks from Weeble by depositing $100 on their platform. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.